So hello everybody and welcome back. If you're new to this channel, make sure you comment down below, say hi, like this video if you find it useful and make sure you subscribe for future videos and future cameras and just everything else that might just pop up. So without further ado, let's get into the Pentax ME Super. So from now on, when I go over a camera for the first time, I'm gonna be using a grading scale. It's gonna have four categories, each worth five points for a total of 21. Now these categories are gonna be as follows. First of all, is gonna be usability. So that covers the camera's ergonomics, uh, ease of use, is it user friendly, the size, startup time, batteries, things like that. Just how easy is it to just pick up this camera and use it? The next category is going to be build quality. Uh, what is it made of? Is it a plastic body? Is it a metal body? Uh, is it known to have any particular issues? Whether it be like a breaking film door, like a Canon AE-1, or uh, in this particular camera, is there electronic issues, things like that? Anything that would reduce the life of this camera or make it easier for you to destroy if you decide that you just are not going to take film pictures anymore. Third category is going to be image quality. So that consists of the lenses that come with this camera, the lens lineup, the focus screen, the light meter, uh, the lens quality, all those things that contribute towards the final image quality that is produced using the camera. And lastly, uh, for now, lastly is going to be versatility. So does it have fully automatic modes? Does it have fully manual modes? Uh, does it have priority modes, timers, long exposures, exposure compensation, uh, mirror locks, things like that. Anything that makes it easy to use this camera in a variety of situations and doesn't kind of lock you in to one set system or setting or anything like that. So we're going to start with that and see how it goes. And once I realize that it doesn't work, we'll change it to something else. So first up is going to be usability. Uh, this camera, I've really enjoyed using the ME Super. Uh, I put a roll of Portra 400 through it, which is kind of like my baseline to judge, you know, the camera's color, contrast, uh, the lens quality, all that kind of thing. And it actually performed very well. It was very easy to use. I just picked up this camera, put a roll of Portra 400 in it, uh, set it to auto. I used it manual here and there. Uh, you'll probably notice those images are the ones that are probably underexposed. I can't remember which ones were which, but uh, the light meter performed very well in this. It's very easy to just pick up and shoot. Aperture is on the lens as always. Over here on the rewind lever, you have of course your exposure compensation dial. You also have your ASA, which goes from 12 all the way to 1600, uh, which isn't bad. Uh, I think most of them should go to 3200, but honestly, I, it's not something I've pushed too far, so I've never really noticed. But I believe a lot of cameras go up to 3200 around this time frame, so that might be a little low, but don't quote me on that. On the other side, you do have your shutter dial, and then there's a little white button, which is a little bit difficult to press sometimes. Uh, that's how you switch from lock to your bulb mode, to your uh, manual mode, and then your 1 25th second, and also auto. So this camera does shoot without a battery at 1 25th of a second, and then also you can use the bulb mode without a battery as well. Auto, you put it on auto just like you would a Canon a one and then also on the lens you switch it to A as well, and you can shoot fully automatic. Now another odd thing on this body is that instead of having a shutter dial where you rotate between the numbers, uh, this just has two buttons. And with these two buttons, you either press up or down to adjust the shutter speed. Now this camera goes from four seconds all the way up to one over 2000. Now, if you get to one over 2000 and press up again, it's going to drop down to the lowest shutter speed and work its way back up. So it's kind of nice that it just kind of loops instead of having to going back and forth, up and down to adjust it like that. Uh, if you're on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, which now that I think about it, that wouldn't really come in handy a whole lot, I guess. Now, a lot of people might see that as a big negative, not having a dedicated shutter speed dial, but actually I find it much easier to do it this way than with a traditional shutter speed dial. It's very easy to feel, even if you're looking into the viewfinder, there's just two buttons, you know which one's on top and which one's on bottom, and it's very easy to press that button accordingly to adjust and go back and forth with your shutter speeds without necessarily looking at it. So as far as usability goes, I give this camera a four. Two main reasons that keep me from giving it a five. One, I'm not a big fan of the shutter button here. It's a very long press, uh, which to me feels like it's taking a lot longer to actually press it and take the shot. 
and it makes me think I'm gonna miss what's happening, which may or may not be true, it's probably just a pet peeve, but it is a noticeable difference on the shutter here on this camera than most other 35 mils that I've used. But the main thing that keeps me from giving this camera a five is that when you look into the viewfinder, you have all your shutter speeds over here, and then you have your split image focusing in the center and split prism around that but there is no way to see your aperture in the viewfinder of this camera. So in order to adjust that, you have to take it away, look down at the lens to adjust your aperture, or you have to know where you are as you're looking into the camera and adjust it that way. Otherwise, you just kind of tweak it until the light meter lines up to where you need it to be to get a proper exposure. So now build quality. Now this camera is made of metal or brass or whatever it is. Point being, it's not plastic. So the exterior and the body of this camera is built pretty well. Uh, but the bottom plate, the battery cover, top plate, all that kind of stuff uh, is all made of a very solid material. The shutter button, of course, is plastic. I've never known that to be an issue though, since it doesn't really protrude too far from the camera. But uh, yeah, another thing is it does take two CR44 batteries, at least I think that's what they're called, which is very common, easy to find, uh, making it very easy to get started with this as well. Now, the one thing I have to cover, or people are gonna give me a hard time, is that this camera is known for having electrical issues. Those electrical issues come with these shutter speed buttons for up and down. Now, personally, I have never had this issue. Uh, I think I've gone through three of these bodies uh, and I haven't come across that yet, but I have read and I have heard and people have told me repeatedly throughout different videos and different times that that is a very common issue with this camera and once it dies, it's pretty much shot. I'm not sure how difficult it is to have repaired if you send it off somewhere, um, but that is a pretty big deal if it's very common and most people say it's only a matter of time. But again, like I said, I've gone through three of these and I haven't had that issue yet. However, uh, I'm going to trust the popular opinion on this and I'm going to say that that is a rather common issue, which is gonna make this camera a three for me as far as build quality goes. If it wasn't for that electronical issue, it would definitely be a four or five because again, it does give you the option to shoot at 125th or bulb without batteries. Uh, so that electrical issue wouldn't really come into play on those, but being tied into a single shutter speed or long exposures uh, isn't exactly fun to me. So next up is gonna be image quality. Now, as you can see from the images that I've been putting up throughout this video, the images you can get with the ME Super are great. I love the colors, I love the contrast. Uh, I was very surprised and very happy with how easy it was to just go out and shoot with this camera and get great results with not having to worry too much about the meter or anything like that uh, and just know that it was gonna give me what I needed. Uh, lens quality, again, Pentax makes great lenses. Uh, you're gonna get great results with those, very much similar to anything you would get with Canon or Nikon. Also, the focus screen, again, like I said, is split image down the middle and then micro prism around that. So you have a few options to make sure you pinpoint your focus and then also the focus screen covers 95% of the image that you're gonna capture. So it gives you a big wide view of what you're gonna be able to get, which is very nice to have. So as far as image quality goes, I'm gonna have to give this camera a four. Uh, the reason it's not gonna get a five, a lot has to do with the lenses available for this camera. Uh, I feel like it doesn't have quite the wide variety that you would have with especially Nikon, uh, since you could pretty much use any lens on any camera with that, or a more popular system like Canon, where they just produce so much that you just have so much available. Uh, I feel like you don't have quite the availability of lenses and options in this that you would with other popular brands. So that's why I have to give it a four instead of a five. Versatility, so settings, availabilities, all that kind of stuff. As I said, it does have exposure compensation. It does have an ASA dial. It does have a automatic mode. It does have a fully manual mode. It gives you bulb. It gives you a mode without a battery as well. And it does go all the way up to one over 2000 shutter speed and down to four seconds. You have a timer right here, which gives you four seconds, or if you pull it all the way and then push it, you have a 10 second timer as well. However, it is missing things like a depth of field preview, uh, an exposure lock, things like that. Uh, there's no mirror lockup, just little things that would kind of take it to the next step uh, and give you more options and make it more of a pro camera as far as a consumer or prosumer. But given everything that is packed into this camera and the size and just the options available, uh, I give it a four for versatility. So that is gonna wrap up my thoughts on the pen Pentax ME Super, a great camera if you can find one at a good deal that has no electronic issues with these shutter dials. If you want something more mechanical where you don't have to worry about that, you can go with something like the Pentax K1000, which is gonna use the same glass, but you can use it without any batteries if you want to. There's also the Pentax ME, which is just a slightly 
dumbed down version of the ME Super that doesn't give you the chance to adjust your shutter speed by yourself. It kind of sets that basically the same as the Nikon EM where you pick your aperture and it'll pick your shutter speed. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure you like, comment down below, and then I'll see you in the next one.